What's going on guys, Justin here, and welcome back to our 15th example video following our course on differential equations. Now today's video is going to be a little more of an application type video where we are going to be going over spring systems. So let's go ahead and get into the video. So for today's video, we are going to be using the following two equations. We will employ these two equations in order to solve spring system type problems. So the first one is a differential equation where we have my double prime plus cy prime plus k y is equal to f. So m there is mass c. If it's equal to zero, will indicate an undamped system. And if c is greater than zero, it will equal a damped system. And uh, what we mean when we say damp is a kind of a outside force that affects the system. So like air resistance or friction or something like that. And then we have k, which is our spring constant. So ky is equal to f, which is force. So we will call that differential equation the equation of motion. And then we have mg is equal to k delta l, which is a corollary of Hooke's law, where mg is the force due to gravity, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. And then we have k, our spring constant, and delta l, which is the distance that the spring is stretched or kind of like displaced from its resting position. And that is a corollary of Hooke's law. So now that we have a mathematical basis for what we're doing, let's go ahead and get into our first example. So for number one, we have an object stretches a spring six inches in equilibrium. Find its displacement for t greater than zero if it's initially displaced 18 inches above equilibrium and given a downward velocity of three feet per second. So let me go ahead and get our equations from the last slide onto here, and then we can write out what we are given in this problem. Okay, there we go. So like I said, I'm now going to write out exactly what we are given by this word problem. I think when you're doing word problems, it's really important to write out what you're given and what you want to accomplish, and then it makes it a lot clearer how you will go about doing it. So we have an object stretches a spring six inches in equilibrium. So that six inches is our delta L. So delta L is equal to six inches, or we will be doing everything in feet. So we'll call it 0 0.5 feet. Sorry for using the imperial system. And then we have the then we have initial conditions given to us. We have that it's initially displaced 18 inches above equilibrium. So our displacement is represented by y, our velocity is y prime, and our acceleration is y double prime because the derivative of displacement is velocity and the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So we have y at zero, our initial displacement is 18 inches, or like I said, I'll be converting to feet, so 1.5 feet. And then we have that we're given an initial downward velocity of three feet per second. So like I said, velocity will be represented by y prime, so y prime at zero is going to be three feet per second. But since it's a downward velocity, it will be negative three feet per second. And we want to find its displacement for t greater than zero. Now, like I said, displacement is given by y, so we will be solving for y and essentially solving the equation of motion for y in a general solution sense. But since this is an initial value problem, we will actually be able to solve for our constants when we get to the end. So let's go ahead and set up this differential equation. So immediately it's worth noting that there are no damping conditions on this differential equation. So this cy prime term will not be factored in here. We will be doing problems that do not factor in damping conditions, kind of like how you don't factor in air resistance in a lot of physics type problems. So taking away our y prime term, we will have my double prime plus ky is equal to f. So first we are going to want to find the general solution for the equation of motion, which means we are going to want to consider this system at equilibrium first, and then we can impose our initial conditions on that general equation and find our specific solution. So when a system is in equilibrium, the net force on it is zero, which means we are going to be considering when the force is equal to zero. Great. So that gives us the new differential equation, my double prime plus ky is equal to zero. Next, we can divide by our mass here. We're gonna do this for a specific reason, which you'll see in a second. So we'll divide by mass and we'll get y double prime plus k over m times y is equal to zero. Now, if you recall, the other equation that we have is mg is equal to k delta L. And although we're not given a k or a mass, we are given a delta L. So if we rearrange this equation, we can see that k over m is going to be equal to g over delta L. And since g is the gravitational constant, we always know what that is. So the gravitational constant is 9.8 meters per second, or in this case, we'll be using feet, so it'll be 32 feet per second, which means we can calculate an exact value for our k over m. So our k over m is equal to g over delta l, which is equal to 32 feet per second squared, 
over our delta L, which was six inches or 0 0.5 feet, which means our K over M is gonna be equal to 64. So we can plug that into the differential equation we have above and we'll get y double prime plus 64y is equal to zero. And this differential equation is rather easy to solve. So we will write the characteristic equation for this differential equation, which is r squared plus 64 is equal to zero. And that will have roots of r is equal to plus or minus eight i, which means the solution to this equation will be given as y is equal to C1 times the cosine of 8t plus C2 times the sine of 8t. Great. Now if you recall our initial conditions are that y evaluated at 0 is equal to 1.5 feet and y prime evaluated at 0 is equal to negative 3 feet per second which means we need to take the derivative of this general solution in order to properly apply our initial conditions. So let's see what the derivative of this is going to be. So we'll have y prime is equal to, well, if we take the derivative of cosine of 8t, we will get a negative 8 coefficient out front, and that cosine will change into a sine, so we will get negative 8c1 times the sine of 8t. And for the second term, we will just get that eight out front. So we will have eight times C2 and that sign will switch to a cosine and we'll have cosine of eight T. So we can use these two equations in our two initial conditions to solve for our C1 and C2 to solve this initial value problem. So Y evaluated at zero is 1.5 feet. So we'll do this first equation first. So that'll give us 1.5 is equal to, we are plugging zero in for our t here, which means that our sine term will go to zero and we will be left with c1 times the cosine of zero, which is just one. So we know that 1.5 is equal to c1. Then we'll do our second equation here. So we know that that is equal to negative three feet per second. So we have negative three is equal to, once again, we are plugging in a zero to our t here. So that will once again, make our sine term disappear and we'll be left with eight times c2 times the cosine of zero, which is just one. And then we'll have eight C2 is equal to negative three. In other words, C2 is equal to negative three over eight, which gives us the following final solution to this initial value problem. We will have that Y is equal to 1.5 times the cosine of eight T minus three over eight times the sine of eight T. Great. So let's go ahead and get into our second problem. So for number two, we are going to want to find the general solution for the following equation. We have y double prime plus omega naught squared is equal to f naught over m times the cosine of omega naught t. So how are we going to go about solving this? Well, let's first look at the corresponding homogeneous equation, which will be y double prime plus omega naught squared times y is equal to zero. Now, because we have this y double prime here, we know we are looking for a function that when you take the second derivative, it is the negative of your initial y, and then we're gonna to have to pick up a, an omega naught squared there as well. Well, it's pretty easy by inspection to see what function is going to give us that kind of behavior. So if we set our y equal to cosine of omega naught times t, we'll see that when we take our derivatives, our y prime is going to equal negative omega naught times the sine of omega naught times t, and y double prime is in fact going to give us what we want, negative omega naught squared times the cosine of omega naught t. So we know this is a solution to the homogeneous equation, so we can guess our particular solution to the original differential equation. So y sub p, and that's going to equal t times a times the cosine of omega naught t, plus b times the sine of omega naught t. Great, so from here we're going to do it just like we've done problems in the past. We are going to take derivatives of this and substitute them in. So our, that means our y prime is going to be equal to, well let's see, let's use the product rule on this. So we'll take the derivative of just that t first, so that'll just give us a one times what's in the parentheses. So we'll have a cosine of omega naught t plus b sine of omega naught t and then we'll have the derivative of the inside times t. Well, we know that when we take the derivative of these terms on the inside, we're gonna pick up an omega naught and that t is gonna stay on the outside. So we will have plus omega naught t times the derivatives of those particular terms. So that first one is gonna contribute a negative sign because the, cos the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we'll have negative a sine omega naught t. And then the other 
and then our b term will give us plus a b times the cosine of omega naught t. Great. So now let's take our second derivative and see if we can get anything to cancel when we make these substitutions. So y double prime is going to be, now I'm not going to carefully go through the evaluation on this second derivative, but once you evaluate the derivative on our y prime, you will get 2 omega naught times negative a sine omega naught t plus b times the cosine of omega naught t. And then the second term will be negative omega naught squared times t times a cosine omega naught t plus b sine omega naught t. Now at this point I hope you realize that some things are going to cancel because this term here in our y double prime term is exactly equal to the negative of our, our y term once you put its coefficient omega naught squared in front of it. So these two are going to cancel out here when we make our substitution, which means we'll just be left with this front part of our y double prime term for the left hand side of our differential equation. Let's go ahead and write that out. So we'll get negative two omega naught times a sine omega naught t minus two omega naught b times the sine of omega naught t. And that is of course still equal to f naught over m times the cosine of omega naught t. And from here we can just equate coefficients to solve for our a and b and then we will have our final solution. So we notice that there is no sine term on this left hand side of the equation which means that we will have the equation negative 2 omega naught a is equal to 0 which of course implies that a is equal to 0. And then we can equate coefficients on this second term here and we'll get negative 2 omega naught times b is equal to f naught over m which we can then very easily solve for b to get b is equal to f naught over 2 omega naught m. And now we can plug these values into our equation for y to get our final solution for y. We'll get y is equal to, if you remember we had t times the quantity a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t and our a is equal to zero so we'll just get our b term left. So we'll have b which is f not on top times t over 2 over 2 omega naught m and that will of course be times sine of omega naught t. So that is our final general solution for this differential equation. Okay, so number three is another word problem, so I'll go ahead and read that. An object stretches a spring 1.2 inches in equilibrium. Find its displacement for t greater than zero if it's initially displaced three inches above equilibrium and given a downward velocity of two feet per second. So I'm not going to copy the equations over again, but I will identify what variables are defined for us here. So we know that our delta L is going to be equal to 0.1 as 12 inches make a foot. So it's 0.1 feet for 1.2 inches at equilibrium. We have the initial displacement or y evaluated at t equals zero is going to be equal to three inches above equilibrium. So that'll be plus three. And we have a given downward velocity, our y prime evaluated at zero. Our y prime evaluated at t equals zero is given at negative two feet per second because it is a downward velocity. So that will be negative two there. And once again, we are not given a damping condition. So we can write out the differential equation that I illustrated for you before. We will have y double prime plus k over m times y is equal to zero. We will solve this equation and then we can impose our initial conditions on it to solve for our constants. Just like before, we are going to solve for our k over m. Using our helpful equation from Hooke's law, we'll have k over m is equal to g over delta l, which in this case is equal to 32 feet per second squared over 0.1 feet. And we can see that that coefficient for our y term is going to be 320. So we can rewrite that equation as y double prime plus 320y is equal to zero. Now we can write our characteristic equation just like we did for the first problem. So we'll have r squared plus 320 is equal to zero. And from here we can note when writing out our roots that 320 is equal to 64 times five. So that means our roots for this are going to be r is equal to plus or minus eight times the square root of five. 
which means our general solution for this will be given as y is equal to c1 times the cosine of 8 times root 5t plus c2 times the sine of 8 times root 5t. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and remind ourselves of our initial conditions. We have that y evaluated at t equals 0 is equal to 1 over 4, or 0 0.25. We have that y prime evaluated at 0 is equal to negative 2. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this y here so that we can solve for our constants and write our final general solution. So we'll have y prime is equal to, well, let's see, that cosine will pick up a negative 8 root 5. So we'll have negative 8 times the square root of 5 times the sine of 8 root 5t. And then the right hand side will just pick up an 8 root 5. So we'll have 8 root 5 times c2 times the cosine of 8 times the square root of 5 times t. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug these in. So for our first equation, we have that 1 over 4 is equal to our c1 times the cosine of 0, which is just 1, so that means 1 over 4 is equal to c1. And for our second equation, we will have that negative 2 is equal to, once again, we are plugging in 0 here for our t, so this sine term will go away, and we'll be left with 8 times root 5 times c2, as the cosine of 0 is, once again, just 1, which gives us the following value for c2 we will have negative 1 over 4 times the square root of 5. So that gives us our final general solution for this differential equation. We have that y is equal to 1 over 4 times the cosine of 8 root 5 t, and then we'll have minus 1 over 4 root 5 times the sine of 8 root 5 t. So that finishes this problem and this video off, and I think that's a good place to stop.